We found the oldest known three-dimensionally preserved fossil brain inside the skull of a fossil fish that's 319 million years old. I'm Sam Giles and I'm a Senior Research Fellow and Royal Society Research Fellow at the University of Birmingham and I work on paleontology and fish evolution. This fossil, Cococephalus, was found in the roof of a coal mine in Lancashire over 100 years ago. It's been studied several times since then and it's been kept at the Manchester Museum where it's been available for public study. And we CT scan the fossil, which is where we use x-rays to uh, take a three-dimensional picture of the fossil and look at its internal anatomy without having to physically cut into it. When we did this, we found this beautiful three-dimensionally preserved skull and brain case. The brain case is a kind of bony box that sits inside the skull and houses the brain and other sensory organs. And generally speaking, the brain doesn't really fossilize. If you think about it, the brain is uh, very soft. It's very easily decayed. So generally speaking, we just see a void inside the cranial cavity and then no, no soft tissue. When we were scanning this fossil, we found a, an unusual three-dimensional X-ray dense item inside the cranial cavity. Uh, this item, as well as being um, 3D, uh, it had hollows in it and it had kind of thin branches coming off it that reached to the outside of the skull. After a lot of study and a lot of thinking about it and a lot of questions, we eventually decided that this was a, a fossilized brain, uh, which is really exceptionally preserved. It's really rare to get this kind of preservation in kind in, inside any fossil, let alone three-dimensional preservation. We worked with some colleagues in the US and we scanned lots of other fossils and lots of living animals and looked at the brain in the living animals and compared it to what we see in the fossil to get a better picture of what this tells us about brain evolution. And it turns out that this fossil, as well as being kind of cool because it preserves the brain, actually changes our picture quite a lot of how the brain evolved in fishes. If you think about fish, there's about 60,000 living species. Half of them are raffined fish. So these are things that you'd see uh, in an aquarium or on a dinner plate. So things like trout and tuna and salmon. And all of those living raffined fishes have a kind of brain which is called averted. So the brain has, uh, during development, it's kind of bulged up and then it's bulged over laterally and you end up with these two solid solid hemispheres making up the forebrain. All other fishes show a very different kind of forebrain called a vaginated, where the, the brain is basically uh, expanded out laterally during development. This is called an evaginated forebrain. So this fossil Cococephalus, instead of having the raffined fish condition where you've got this averted forebrain, it actually shows the opposite condition. It shows the evaginated condition. And this is really interesting because it means that instead of all raffined fishes having this particular kind of feature, this averted forebrain, it seems to be restricted just to the living animals. And there are lots of other features in its brain that are very different to what um, we might expect from this kind of fossil animal. And it tells us that actually brain evolution in fishes is much more complicated than we'd expect just from looking at living animals. So it's really important to look at the fossils and figure out how they fit into the story. Um, this is obviously a really exciting, really new piece of research. Uh, we're hoping in the future to find other fossils that perhaps preserve the brain. This is such an unprecedented thing to find a three-dimensionally preserved fossil brain in an animal of this age. But the fact that we found it in this one animal means that it's pretty likely that it uh, is fossilized in lots of other fossils as well. Uh, there is evidence from a slightly younger, so 300 billion year old chondrichthyon from the USA that seems to have a fossil brain preserved as well. So our next steps are to look at some other fossils, uh, see if we can track down any other brain preservation and see what that tells us about brain evolution in vertebrates as a whole. We're also going to do some work to try and figure out how the brain fossilizes in the first place. It's such a soft and delicate piece of tissue that you'd imagine it will be lost really, e really early during decay. So we're going to do some experiments to try and figure out how you get the brain to preserve in the first place. Mm -hmm.